Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to October 13th. We're doing our Facebook Global Live travel update a day earlier this week because I've been traveling. Uh, and some of you, I think, may have been given some clues. I know I put it out there is to figure out where we're actually broadcasting from. I'll repeat those clues to you. Uh, this is a destination that tried to join Canada three separate times. Obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, the, the logo on the flag at, at one point was an igloo. I still haven't figured that out. And first George Washington and then the Queen of England demanded that the people here send them salt, a process that's still continuing. All right, where am I? Anybody want to guess? Of course, you can always log in and say hi wherever you are. But I'll tell you right now, we're in the Turks and Caicos in Long Bay at a place called the Beach Enclave. And of course, happy to be here for a whopping 48 hours doing our, all the stories that we do. And of course, answering all of your questions as well. Lots of things to talk about today. In fact, let's start with the uh, the craziness that happened last weekend and is continuing this week over at Southwest Airlines. Uh, starting last Friday, they uh, there was a meltdown, a, a total implosion, if you will, with uh, thousands of flights canceled, uh, many, many hundreds of flights delayed. They're still working through the schedule uh, as I speak now. Hopefully it'll get organized by the end of this week. But the real questions remain, why did that happen? And there are so many rumors out there and so many stories. I'm going to try to navigate them for you. Southwest, for its part, claimed it happened because of an air traffic control flow situation in the Jacksonville uh, ATC Center and also because of uh, weather in some Florida cities. Now, the FAA kind of pushed back on that, said that really wasn't a problem, and no other airlines reported weather. So that often, that then opened up a can of worms and starts, and, and rumors started that it really was a slowdown or a sick out by employees of Southwest protesting against the airline's new vaccination mandate and deadline of December 8th, that their employees had to be vaccinated or face termination. Well, we did some checking, and there was a little bit of an air traffic control hiccup in Jacksonville. And there was a little bit of weather, but would that alone have caused this? We also did some checking in, on the data and found out there was no employee abnormalities at Southwest and there was no absenteeism. So it was, even though the Southwest Airlines Pilots Union has already sued the airline to protest the mandate, uh, the pilots were flying. At least they were there reporting to work. So what was it? So we dug a little deeper. And here's what it was, and it's... Uh, there's an interesting lesson here for not just Southwest, but other airlines as well. So let me put this in perspective to start. In a given year, even prior to the pandemic, let's say in the last 10 years, how many new routes in a given year did Southwest Airlines inaugurate? Anybody want to guess? Whatever you're going to guess is wrong. The answer is on an average, one. Southwest was an incredibly well-managed airline. It enjoyed great residual passenger goodwill. They weren't charging you for checked bags. They had a schedule that worked. They only flew one kind of equipment, which meant the pilots only had to be trained on one kind of equipment. Same thing with the mechanics. They only had to carry spare parts for one kind of equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. An airline that consistently turned a profit since it started back in the 19, early 1970s. So what was it? It gets back to schedule. Earlier this summer, when travel came back with a roar and Southwest Airlines found itself with a lot of parked planes and they wanted to put them back in the air, they basically doubled and tripled down on their schedule. And in the process, they just didn't resume their original schedule. They added, I believe, three dozen new routes. They essentially overscheduled the airline using uh, resources that were margin thin in terms of staffing. So any particular hiccup along the route and you, 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 you face the risk of a shutdown. And that's exactly what happened last weekend. And to complicate matters, which passengers soon learned, Southwest Airlines, since it started, doesn't have any interline agreements with any other carriers, which means they can't just endorse your ticket over to another carrier and have them fly you home. Their ticket is only valid on Southwest and Southwest alone. So the passengers who got stranded on Saturday were told the earliest they could get them out on Southwest was Wednesday. What did people do? They either took out their wallets and bought very expensive tickets on other carriers, assuming they could find space on those carriers, or they basically carpooled with all their newfound friends that were stranded at the airport and went rented a car and drove anywhere from 400 to 600 miles to get to where they were going. Uh, not a pretty uh, picture and one that continues, by the way, even today. 
So we're going to see what happens because every time you shut an airline down for like 12 hours, it takes that airline about 36 hours to reposition and rebuild their schedule because they have to reunite crews with planes physically, and then they have to get back on the original track and, and then honor the reservations on that track going forward. It's, a, it's, it's quite complicated and quite intense. But that, in a nutshell, is what happened at Southwest. However, and here's the big however, let's go back to the rumor about the showdown, of the slowdown and the sick out. No, that didn't happen at Southwest, but it could happen soon at another airline, America. Southwest and Alaska, when they issued their vaccine mandates, gave everybody a deadline of December 8th to get vaccinated or face termination. You may remember United Airlines back about eight weeks ago gave their 67,000 workers a deadline of September 27th to get vaccinated or face termination. And what happened on September 27th? 99% of the employees had gotten vaccinated. Only about 590 employees were, were basically facing termination. Delta uh, put a different mandate into place that if you're not vaccinated by November 1st, $200 a month will be deducted from your paycheck to pay for your prospective medical costs you know, associated with COVID. Uh, but in this case, let's now talk about American. What did American do? And this amazes me. They picked another date for the mandate. November 24th. Look at the calendar. Does that date ring a bell? It should. It's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. That's the largest single travel day of the year, right? Remember the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? It's dedicated to that day. And if we don't want a remake of that movie, get ready for November 24th this year because the American Airlines Pilot Association has already notified the airline that, that they're pushing back and protesting. And here's the interesting duel here, because it is getting down to a duel. If 4,000 unvaccinated American Airlines pilots stay unvaccinated and get terminated, very few people are going to be traveling on November 24th and beyond. So who's holding all the cards here? Forget the politicization of masks. Forget the politicization of vaccines. The reality is, if you terminate 4,000 unvaccinated American Airlines pilots, the airline cannot operate. Interesting negotiation coming up, so stay tuned on that. Uh, we have some other interesting news happening this week. Two days from now, for those of you who have a sense of history, uh, Alitalia, remember that airline, the flag carrier of Italy? Been in business since 1946, flown by four popes over 57 years. It ceases to exist. It's gone. It's liquidated. Sayonara. Ciao. And... That's sad. Now, for me, I mean, I, 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 I'm very sorry anytime a flag carrier goes away, especially with one of such history. At the same time, let's be real, Alitalia has struggled for the last 20 years, forgetting about making a profit, just getting in the air. I used to joke that Alitalia stood for all land in Tokyo, all luggage in Athens. Maybe not a joke. <laughs> but the sad part about it is, as of this Friday, it's gone forever. And it's being replaced by a new airline called ITA. Isn't that exciting? A very, very kind of catchy name. ITA. It stands for it stands for Italia Trasporto Aereo. But it's not the same airline. It's a shell of the former Alitalia with a root network that's very, very tiny. So, uh, and who knows if they'll stick around? Remember, it wasn't that long ago when nobody wanted to save Alitalia financially. And then one group stood up and said, we'll save it. And you're never going to believe who said they were going to save it. The Italian post office. The most absurd idea ever. Well, that didn't happen either. Uh, the unions didn't help. The environment didn't help in terms of the economic environment. The pandemic certainly was a catalyst in terms of triggering its demise. This Friday, it's gone. Now, what happens if you have a ticket on Alitalia? You have about a day to get a refund. After that, there is no recourse. Uh, what about if you have mileage on Alitalia? Better, better start applying it to their partner carriers as of yesterday, right, in their strategic alliance. Do that now or it's over, right? Those miles expire. You need to transfer them over to flights on partner carriers. Even if they're like 300 days out, do it now or those miles are gone forever. Okay, one more item in the news before we get to your questions, and it's a biggie. 
It was announced just a few hours ago that the United States is opening up the land borders with Mexico and Canada next month, much as they're doing with the airline borders or the the airport borders for fully vaccinated travelers who can show proof of vaccination, which means now you can drive across to Mexico and drive across to Canada. Uh, This is a huge deal in terms of the economy and in terms of visiting friends and relatives. So they haven't announced the date yet, but my intelligence says it'll probably be in and around November 8th. So just about a month from now. Now, what does that all mean? It means that even though they're driving across, they're going to be staying in hotels. They're going to be doing some flying within the country. And that triggers what? The same thing's going to be happening with the Europeans coming here next month. They're not just flying to the United States, they're flying through it, which means airfares are going up between 3 and 5% right now per day, compounded. So if you've got Thanksgiving plans and you haven't made them yet or formalized your airline tickets, be prepared to go to your wallet. Here's my advice. Now, let's try to be honest here. What is Thanksgiving? To me, it's an obligatory dysfunctional family get-together, right? All your relatives are going to push all your emotional buttons. Why do you want to do this? You're certainly not going because you have a need for turkey or cranberry sauce. So I'm going to give you the advice I gave pre-pandemic, and I will continue to give. Don't travel during Thanksgiving, period. Travel the week before or do what I do, travel the week later. There are two weeks in America when it comes to travel that are called in the industry dead weeks. It's the week immediately following Thanksgiving. That's when Americans are recovering from that dysfunctional family get together. Or it's the week after New Year's when we're just simply recovering. And if you check a look at the, take a look at the airfares, you will see that the airfares plummet on the Tuesday following Thanksgiving. And they plummet two to three days after New Year's. Take advantage of that. Because of the pandemic, so many of us are now working remotely, living remotely, learning remotely. We're not punching a a, a clock and coming into a physical office. We can work from anywhere. So why would we have seasonality somehow come into the play here when it's not necessary for it to do so? Especially when you don't want to get killed by the law of supply and demand and having to, to pay excessive amounts of money to stand in line and be delayed anyway. All right, that's my fabulous advice for uh, for Thanksgiving. But the good news is our borders are opening both land and air, none too soon. So uh, congratulations for the people who've had the thought process to do that. Uh, Jane says, hi, we're going to the questions now. Uh, Jew is saying hi from Japan. Patty, Grace Bay Beach, great vacation. Agreed, Patty. Uh, the Turks and Caicos manages itself to be manageable. And it's a beautiful beach. I'm not getting in the water today. I'm working. But uh, I can tell you for a fact, it is a gorgeous day here. Uh, okay. Uh, ah, here's a very interesting question from Joan Haas. Can I recommend top three cruise line companies that don't dump waste into the ocean? Well, I have some good news for you, Joan. Uh, if you go on a cruise ship today, you may not see it. It may not be offered as a uh, organized tour, but you should ask to do it. They have one complete full deck donated to uh, do- uh, dedicated to waste management. They have a zero tolerance policy. Everything is crushed on the ship. Everything is compacted on the ship. Nothing is burned on the ship. So there's no air, there's no air environmental problems and nothing is thrown over the side. Zero tolerance policy. Uh, Every once in a while, you'll see one or two cruise lines that sort of violate that. Uh, A couple of years ago, Princess was really in bad shape because of that. They didn't violate it just once, they violated it twice. But if you go on the other carnival ships, if you, and now Princess too, because they got caught. Uh, if you go on uh, Silver Sea, if you go on uh, all the Royal Caribbean ships, they are dedicated to this now. Zero tolerance policy, and I'm very happy they finally uh, came to their senses. Uh, hello from Cove Creek, Arizona. Mary Louise, oh my God, haven't seen you in ages. I give you a big hug and kiss. Uh, Ellen Grinsberg is watching from Long Island, New York. I miss Long Island, hoping to get back there in about a week. Uh, what hotel are you in today? It looks familiar. Well, maybe not. It's called the Beach Enclave. It's a series of villas right here in Long Bay in the Turks and Caicos. Brand new. Uh, okay. Uh, tuning in from, uh, from LA, that's Trayvon. Robin DiCarlo, greetings and good day from Williamsburg, Virginia. Two weeks to go until Alaska, until Alaska, until Aloha. <laughs> Sorry about that, Robin. Every week, Robin gives us the countdown. Uh, ah, Mike Lucan says, going on the Crystal Endeavor in October. 
The Crystal Endeavor is a brand new luxury expedition ship. Only about 120 passengers. Um, and it goes to places that the big ships can't and won't go to. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and, and you do it. So you're in an expedition ship where you're literally getting out there in your boots and your Zodiacs and exploring. But you're also, you know, having a great fine dining and spa experience when you get back to the ship at night. The old expedition ships were truly just expedition ships and converted research vessels. Crystal Endeavor has uh, has set the standard now for great expedition ships. Also, uh, uh, Silver Sea has got another one, too. They're coming out, and they're great. They've figured it out, and they're manageable. You're not spending 6,000 passengers at the same time. It's 120, maybe 150 passengers. It's it's the way to do it. Uh, Beth says hello from Naples. Iris says hello from Chicago. Come visit again. I will. Although I'm still recovering from the University of Wisconsin's football loss against Michigan. Although, speaking of Illinois, Wisconsin beat Illinois this week because they found the one team, the one team that was actually worse than Wisconsin, and they shut them out on Wisconsin. However, don't ask who who they're playing next week. I don't even want to know. Uh, Colleen says, I love Alitalia. Me too. You know, at one time, you know, their uniforms, I mean, they, they were so stylish. Oh, my God. I mean, everything was style. Uh, they were a little lacking on the substance, but the style was great. Although I will tell you a funny story about Alitalia. When planes were divided into smoking and non-smoking sections, I have no idea the common sense behind this one because there was no common sense. Smoking in, in, in Alitalia was on the left side of the plane <laughs> and non-smoking was on the right. I'm not kidding. I mean, give me a break. Um, all right. Um, ah, any other airline that will go direct to Rome from Los Angeles? Right now, no. We'll find out what the new airline is going to do in terms of their long haul operations. But if you're looking for a great way to go to Rome from LA, uh, fly to Newark and take Emirates. They also fly to Milan. Uh, okay, someone's tuning in from Washington, D.C. Let me come back over here. We're scrolling up. Ah, Jimmy says Portugal currently lists that they accept vaccine certificates from reciprocal countries. Do you anticipate the U.S. being added to this list as we open to the EU? Well, they're already accepting uh, my vaccine card from the U.S., so I don't know what your question is. You're in good shape. Um, okay. Irvine is saying hello in the, in the form of Mia. Uh, Joy is saying, going away the week after New Year's, when is the best time to buy airfare? Right now. You're, you're, you're about 60 days out, and you can do it. But remember, don't do it on January 1 or 2. Do it on the 3rd or the 4th, because by that time, the, the fares will plummet. Uh, Okay, uh, let's see. Chris Haas is saying hi from the San Francisco Bay Area, by the way, uh, this weekend. If you're in Atlanta, I'll be speaking at the Travel and Adventure Show at the, uh, at the World Congress. And then on the 23rd and 24th, and this is for Chris in the Bay Area, I'll be speaking in Santa Clara at the Convention Center there at the Travel and Adventure Show. So come out and see me. I'd love to see you as well. Uh, okay, Debbie wants to know, what do I think about the cruise ships canceling ports like Key West, Jamaica, and the Cayman Islands? Every country has different rules about the vaccination uh, demands that they have. The Bahamas is a good example. They require everybody coming ashore be fully vaccinated. And if you're on a ship where vaccinations are optional, ship's not stopping. Uh, if you look at the contract of carriage on cruise ships, you'll notice that they reserve the right to substitute ports under situations where they have no control. This is one of them. So look at your cruise ship itineraries before you book and find out, A, if the cruise ship com completely demands 100% vaccination compliance, and if they don't, you better find out on the itinerary which countries they're going to that do, because you won't be going there. All right. Lindy says, hi, from Ventura. Hello back, Lindy. Tuning in from the villages in Florida. Hello, Linda. Tammy is saying, watching from Houston, Texas. I used to live in Houston, Texas. Uh, right off the, uh, the 59 by the Galleria. In fact, in the summer months, this is how crazy it was. It was so hot in Houston that I would go over to the Galleria, not to shop, but because they had an ice skating rink, and I'd just sit next to the rink. That's how hot it was in Houston. Um, okay. Okay, Heather has an interesting question and one we need to address. Given the recent changes allowing vaccinated European, Mexicans, and Canadians entering the U.S., will the U.S. eliminate the need for a negative COVID test among vaccinated U.S. citizens reentering the U.S.? No, we won't. And in fact, that applies to anybody entering the United States coming back. So I'm leaving uh, tomorrow. I have to get my, my COVID test today. 
and uh, remember, within 72 hours of your return. Hello from Illinois. Yeah, the one team we beat. Hello, Steve. Uh, okay. Hello from San Diego, says Tammy. Robert says, when do I think Barbados will make it easier to travel there? Let me scroll up here. I just lost you there a second. Hold on. We're going. Ah, there it is. Even vaccinated people need a special PCR test to fly in, then additional tests upon arrival to be released from quarantine. They're going to keep that up for a while. Uh, look, the Turks and Caicos, where I am now, they were one of the first countries to do what? To shut down completely. And I mean lock down. Can't even leave your house. The, the, the military was patrolling the streets. Then they figured out a way around it and, the, and, and a healthy way around it. You can't come to the Turks and Caicos without providing and buying a separate insurance policy to cover you in case you get the virus, which will also protect you and get you home. I had to do that, right? Number two, you have to get tested before you get on the plane. And you don't have to get tested once you're here, but you do, of course, under the U.S. regulations, have to get tested before you return. I would suspect that the Barbados folks will keep that in place until the end of this year. Uh, okay. Stephen says, I'm tired of all the BS. No more flights until masks are my choice and government steps aside. Stephen, I ain't flying with you. Bye-bye. I'm sorry. Look, this is not a political issue. It's a public health issue. And I'll tell you when the masks won't be required. And you may not even like it. But mark my words, by the end of this year, you won't be able to get on an airplane in the United States unless you can show proof of vaccination. Da-da. You won't be able to go to the dry cleaner, the supermarket, the movie theater, a Broadway show. You won't be able to fill your gas tank. The economic consequences of being unvaccinated or not wearing a mask are going to become severe. Not because there's some bad government out there, but because there's a bad virus out there. So anybody wants to argue that point, be my guest. But I can tell you, Steve, with all due respect, you won't be on my plane. And you, you've already announced it. You won't be on any plane. So that's your choice. But if you want to fly, you know the rules. Uh, okay, here's, uh, here's Jerry who says, since the United States is not going to have a national COVID passport, Singapore is not going to accept the CDC paper from the U.S., only a digital version. The Philippines is turning down U.S. CDC paper and digital vaccine proof and asking for a yellow card. Oh, my goodness. Let's go back to the future. Anybody remember the yellow card? I, By the way, I still carry one because of my yellow fever and my tetanus and my typhoid shots, not to mention malaria. Uh, very few people carry that anymore. You know what? Every country that operates on its own in a vacuum like this is doing so at its own peril. We're going to get to a, a commonality here in the next month or two because they're going to see their numbers drop off dramatically because people, even though they're vaccinated, don't have their proper documentation. Documentation. It's not working. I've said this from day one of the pandemic. We need a centralized set of standards that's easily readable, easily verifiable, easily updatable and not forgeable. The technology is already there. Get everybody in the same room and stop the BS. Okay. Uh, Boise, Idaho, Ron's checking in. And uh, Katrina's saying hello from Alabama. All right, we're keeping down here. Uh, if the destination I'm visiting is listed as level three or level four travel advisory by the U.S. State Department, Mia wants to know this, will the cruise trip insurance claim be invalid? Depends on who you're buying the insurance from. You need to double check. Now, here's my advice about travel insurance. You never, and by the way, how often do you ever hear me use the N-word? You never want to buy the travel insurance from the travel provider themselves. When you go online to an OTA, you can't complete the transaction unless you opt in or out of the insurance. Here's a little bit of hint. Opt out. Then call your travel agent or advisor. Get them to explain to you what the insurance they can sell you covers, as well as what it doesn't cover. The same thing applies to a cruise ship. Buy it from the travel agent. Don't buy it from the cruise ship. And then find out exactly what's not covered before you book the trip. Not in the process of booking the trip. That's the fallacy of booking online when you have to opt in or out before you complete the transaction. There's something very disingenuous about that because it speaks to your fears, but not to your intelligence. So listen to me on this. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, up. Linda says, given William Shatner's emotional reaction to flying Blue Origin this morning, when might you be on board? <laughs> all right. Can I just tell you my feelings on this? I've said it before. All right. This applies to Jeff Bezos. It applies to Richard Branson. They're not going to space. They're going to space adjacent. We're all doing our impression of the Russian monkey from Sputnik in 1959. 
right? Even Alan Shepard, the first man into space. No, he didn't orbit. He went up and he came down 20 minutes later. Let's revisit some history here. So for $250,000, I can go and get my uniform from Virgin, make believe I'm an astronaut, get my little wings, and go up for 24 minutes. Look, I applaud the fact that they're doing this, but let's not kid ourselves. Nobody's going into space. William Shatner is an actor. He now can act that he was in space, right? But he wasn't beamed up, and he didn't get up to space. He went to space adjacent. So count me out for now. Not because I'm not an explorer. I am. Not because I'm not an adventurer. Oh, I am. It's because I'm a realist. Think about it. You could go on the Vomit Comet. There's a company called Zero G. Check them out. And not for $250,000, but for about $6,000, they'll take you up in a specially outfitted and padded 727. You'll put on a little spacesuit there as well. And they'll do a deep parabolic dive from about 60,000 feet. And you're going to have some incredible weightless moments flying around a cabin. I love that. By the way, you're not an astronaut there either. But you just saved $245,000. Da-da. Okay. Uh, okay. Ah, Cheryl's wishing her uncle uh, a happy birthday day who lives in Grand Turk. All right. We love that. Uh, Evelyn's saying hello from Denver. Uh, ah. Tammy says she still has her yellow vaccination card from the military back from 1985. Okay. All right. Let's go back to a few more questions, and I'm going to go to ones that you sent in. Uh, and in fact, I'll do that now. Let's uh, let me give you a, another self, shameless plug, which, by the way, it's still on public television, and it's now available on Amazon Prime and Apple TV Plus. It's our one-hour global television special on Hidden Turkey. Roll the trailer. Get set for a journey you've never taken. This is amazing. I'm Peter Greenberg, and I'll show you a country you never really knew. Ooh, hot. From Roman ruins to downhill races, we'll see how surprising this old and new country really is. This is what I came for. There are countless treasures, all hiding in plain sight. And I'll show them to you. <laughs> Welcome to Hidden Turkey. All right, again, check your PBS stations, local listings, or go right online. You can stream it on Amazon uh, Prime and Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, here's an interesting question, which comes in from uh, Geraldine in Chicago. You said, do not go on third parties, meaning the OTAs. Go directly to the websites. Uh, well, actually, no, I didn't say that either. But they do not save as much as the third parties. How do we save on our trips? Okay, let me back up. Research on, on the web. You can research either on the airline's own website or research on the actual OTAs, like Expedia, Travelocity, Orbitz, you know what I'm saying. However, let us not lose sight of the, of the need, the need to use a phone, to have a conversation. Call the airline or hotel directly, right? Do your research first online, no, no problem there, no harm, no foul. Then call the hotel or airline directly. Because what they're looking on their computer screens at is not what you're seeing on yours. They're looking at a completely different set of inventory and pricing. And you can have a conversation that goes way beyond the rate at the hotel, right? You can ask questions like, can my kids stay free or eat free? Will you throw in free Wi-Fi? Will you get rid of those $9 bottles of water? What about the draconian resort fee that you need to dispute at all costs? Internet's not going to help you out for that. And at the airline level, they're looking at flights and routings that I guarantee you, you're not seeing on the web. How many of you have gone on a website and you see a, a fare listed, only two left at this price? And oh my God, I better get it. Let's get real. It's only two left in the inventory allotment that that website got from the airline. That doesn't mean there are two sets left on the, two seats left on the flight. Get it? You lose nothing by having a phone call. Now, some of you are intimidated about picking up the phone. Some of you are culturally incapable of having a phone conversation. I, I basically appeal to everybody under the age of 25 who seems to think that their phone is not to be used for talking. But forgetting that, you lose nothing by having that conversation. For example, I wanted to go from Los Angeles to Hawaii. I went online. I saw all these $700 and $800 tickets, uh, all nonstop. Then I made a phone call to the airline. And the airline said to me, you know what? Here's another idea. Instead of flying Los Angeles nonstop to Honolulu, why don't you fly Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Honolulu? 
or Los Angeles, Phoenix, Honolulu, you'll save two to three hundred dollars. And that's exactly what I did. Would that have shown up online? It did not. Right. There are a lot of secret flights that do not show up online because they're not listed. Right. For a long period of time, if you wanted to go from New York to Vancouver, you'd only see Air Canada flights or some United flights through Chicago. You didn't see that Cathay Pacific, an airline based in Hong Kong, had a nonstop every day from New York to Vancouver on the way to Hong Kong. It's about having the conversation. All right. Now, when you finish that conversation and the website can still give you a lower fare, then go with it. But don't make that your only stop on your price search. All right. Okay. Just want to make sure you understood that. Uh, okay. Ah, got it. Brian suggesting research on Google flights uh, and their email updates on price changes. Yes, that's also good, but do it. I'll, I'll have to show it to you next week. I carry with me three big official airline guidebooks, OAGs. They're like little small yellow pages, but they're not so small. They're like this thick. And each of them lists in either the Middle East and Europe, Africa and the Americas, or actually the Americas and, and the Caribbean, or 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 the or the or the Asia and the, and the Far East, every single published flight that operates. No, not the limited stuff you see on on your screens when you go online, not the limited stuff you see in the newspapers. Assuming you ever, ever read newspapers, it's everything that's listed, and that's what I use before I even go online to find out who's flying there that I might not even know about. I've talked about this before. I need to go to Buenos Aires from Santiago. You know what airline he flew? Turkish. Doesn't show up online. Turkish Airlines has a flight that goes from Istanbul to San Diego and then continues down to BA. It's a shuttle flight, but they're allowed to take what's called local traffic. On a brand new 777, the ticket cost me $100 in business class only because I searched for it manually and not online. All right? Uh and Laurel wants to know, is there going to be a travel and adventure show in Los Angeles in 2022? The answer is, yes, there is. And next week, I'll get you the dates. But the answer is, yes, there will be. And they've just added one in New York for January of 2022 as well at the Javits Center. And I'll be there as well. All right. Now it's time to go to the picture of the week. Let's do it. And here it comes. Can anybody tell me where that is? How beautiful is that? You see the mill stream there? The beautiful red sort of barn that was taken in New Jersey in Clinton Falls. You know, New Jersey gets a bum rap. Everybody thinks it's the New Jersey, New Jersey turnpike and refineries and the opening, you know, the opening of the, of the Sopranos. New Jersey is one beautiful state. People forget they call it the garden state for a reason. And uh, this was taken in Clinton Falls and uh, beautiful. Thank you for Lillian Berger who took the picture. Nicely done. And a great way, as she said, to spend a day in a small town setting. New Jersey is all about small towns. And another little piece of information that most of you don't know, it's got a great Revolutionary War history. And you can actually do a Revolutionary War trail through New Jersey. It's fascinating. And then, of course, if you like to go antiquing like I do, it's, it's a little dangerous because you're going to buy stuff. All right? That's what's going to happen. All right, now let's go to some of the questions that you sent in during the week. Uh, here's one. Sam says, I'm reading. Oh. I'm reading conflicting reports about the Southwest Airlines pilots. What's the deal and will they continue to cancel flights? The pilots weren't involved in this meltdown of Southwest last week, but they could be moving forward. We're seeing a, a growing number of protests against Southwest and against American Airlines by their pilots protesting against the vaccine mandate deadline. We'll have more next week on this. Uh, okay, here's one from Sarah. I saw this horrible report about DIA, that's Denver International, their security line taking hours and wrapping all the way back to baggage claim. I'm flying out of this airport in a couple of weeks. How much time should I allow for security? I'm pre-checked, but the report I read said they got out of line there too. Well, here's the deal. You haven't told me what day of the week you're flying. You haven't told me what time of day you're flying. And you haven't told me whether or not you're a member of CLEAR. I love CLEAR because even though I'm a member of PreCheck. What Clear does is I bypass even the pre-check line. Clear basically verifies me with a biometric reading of my eyes and then walks me to the front of the line of pre-check. How cool is that? And sometimes, not always, the pre-check line can be longer than the regular line. But I've never had a line of Clear. And they do a great job. 
So check to see if they're at the Denver airport. If they are, that's what you want to do. Remember, your time's important to you. But then again, get back to me and tell me what day of the week you're flying and what time of the day. It makes a big difference. Uh, all right, Mary says, I, I saw your hidden gems of Kauai. That's right. If you go to our website, petergreenberg.com, you'll see our, our recent posting of the hidden gems of Kauai. She wants to know, what about Maui? Well, you know what? When Hawaii begins to reopen again, they're still in a problem right now because of the governor asking people not to come. We'll get back there and we'll do Maui, I promise you. Uh, and by the way, you can also always follow me on Twitter. It's at Peter S. Greenberg or Instagram at Peter Greenberg. So check it out. We post there every day and we update every day. And of course, our website, petergreenberg.com. If I haven't answered your questions today, not a problem. I'll do it online or on our radio show, Eye on Travel. Airs every Saturday from a different location somewhere around the world. And I'll give you a hint. It's airing this Saturday, but not from Turks and Caicos. It's a, plot, a place about 9,000 miles away. And not as the crow flies. So now I've given you no help at all in the hint. But tune in this Saturday, 10 to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can also stream it live on our website at about 10.05 a.m. Eastern Time. All right. Here's one... Uh, from Tim, have vaccine mandates really reduced the pilot and flight attendant workforce? No, it hasn't, but it might in the case of Southwest Airlines and American. Remember, United Airlines, 99% vaccinated, so not an issue there. Delta, they're getting great response on people not wanting to spend $200 a month out of their salary because they're not vaccinated. We're going to see what happens with Southwest and American because their pilot union is pretty adamant about protesting the deadline and protesting the idea of a vaccination mandate. Uh, okay, here's one from Christine. Oh, almost answered my question. Is clear better than pre-check? Which line do you think moves faster through security? I already answered that. It's clear any day of the week. And the answer is clear. There's a point. Okay, Elsa, are there any apps? You oh, by the way, for clear, there are so many different ways for you to, to get on board with that and save money. A, a number of the, of the credit cards, whether it's American Express, I think Chase Sapphire or Chase Reserve, uh, maybe even Capital One, check your credit card. They may have a, one of the perks uh, that will they'll cover the cost of clear. They'll even cover the cost of global entry, which also includes pre-check. So it's one-stop shopping. Check it out. Uh, okay, Nancy says, are you seeing airline ticket prices increase or just for the holiday times? Again, there's no seasonality left. It's not about the holidays. It's about the fact that people are now flying now because they can after 18 months. That's why planes are packed in October, right? Uh, flying down here from the U.S., every seat was taken, right? October is usually a shoulder month. So when you have those kind of loads, you're going to see those kind of prices. So unless you're booking something for March or April now, book it soon because those prices, as I said earlier on in our broadcast today, are going up the, at the rate of about 3 to 5% per day compounded. Uh, Okay, have rental car prices gone down at all? Is it the same story as this summer if I want to rent a car this coming winter? Eric wants to know. Yeah, they haven't really gone down. I'm afraid to tell you. The chip problem with the manufacturing has led to delays in delivering their new fleet. They're still operating an old fleet of what was left of the old fleet after they sold most of their fleet during the pandemic. So they just don't have the inventory. Their lots are almost empty. The prices are reflecting that. My hope is November, December, it might loosen up a little. But by February, I think they might be back on track. Uh, okay, Paul says, I'm looking for the lowest cost destination for a family vacation this Thanksgiving. Any advice? Yeah, don't go during Thanksgiving. I thought I was clear about that. Uh, and all kidding aside, uh, look, if you want a great va vacation for Thanksgiving for the family, get ready. You can do it overseas. It's cheaper than America on many flights. And by the way, you can have the turkey when you come home. So check out the airfares. But again, please listen to me. Forget Thanksgiving week, right? I mean, there's a reason why they made the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. It honors that craziness. Go the week after. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Mila wants to know, what's the latest on global entry renewal times? How long does the process take? I have to tell you, it's getting better. You still have to get an appointment. You still have to set that appointment and actually make that appointment. But the point is, it used to be like, forget about it, six to eight months. Now it's about four to five weeks. So things are getting better. Uh, okay. Let's see. Ah, 
How do you want to know about Australia lockdown and curfews? We're talking March. That's not changing. Not changing at all. Joseph says, Jumbo from Nairobi. Uh, and uh, that, uh, nice to see you, Joseph. You're always on board. Uh, okay, how do the rapid COVID tests with, with telemed access work from outside the U.S.? You know what? I don't know. But my research team will check it out for you, and I'll give you that answer next week. Uh, okay. Ah. All right. Patrick Cooney says that you're embarking on the Majestic Princess this Saturday. Yeah, the Majestic Princess just called on San Francisco. They're sailing from U.S. ports now. So let me know how that cruise goes, Patrick. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I answered that one. Let me scroll down one more second. Ah, what airline did I come in on to the Turks and Caicos? Well, I came in on American. I'm going back on Delta. It's just the way that the timing worked. Uh, okay, Geraldine, thank you for your nice comments. Robin says, be safe, get the vaccine. I, I agree. Pat says, recently threw for Denver around 4 p.m. Monday. Clear got me past the long, long line at TSA in minutes. My point exactly. I mean, necessity being the mother of invention, they're doing a good job. Uh, okay. Ah, Evelyn says, the reason why it's bad at Denver is because they close a lot of the pre-check lines because of lack of TSA agents. There's still 5,000 agents short in the U.S. And the fact that they say they're hiring them is a good sign, but they first have to train them. And that takes a long time. All right. I'm looking to see if there are any former, for, uh, f- final messages. I'm looking. Uh, uh, Joy Daniels said, can you get travel deals at the travel and adventure shows? There are a lot of exhibitors there doing just that. That's not what I'm there for. I'm not selling anything. They are. Uh, and there are a lot of great deals you can get. I'm there just to do what I'm doing today, to present information and give you the kind of information you hopefully can use to make intelligent choices on your end of the travel equation. So I hope you'll join us. And uh, a lot of nice uh, kudos to uh, to uh, uh, Miss Berger on her on her wonderful photo from New Jersey. Thank you there. Uh, and ah, here's one from Lorena. I'm looking for flights to Nairobi. Delta was only showing flights going through London or Paris, which I didn't want. I called Delta and they told me, yes, we have flights through Amsterdam by route of choice. You called them. You see what I'm saying? Delta's part of the Sky Team. They partner with KLM. So their flight might even be operated by KLM and not Delta. And by the way, the KLM to to Nairobi flight is a good flight. I've taken it. Uh, The other way to get there, believe it or not, and I love it, is uh, Qatar through uh, Doha. If you take a look at Emirates or you take a look at Etihad, they are perfectly positioned to be a hub to get to Africa. And last but not least, let's not rule out Turkish because they fly to more destinations than any other airline in the world through Istanbul. And I guarantee you they've got great connections from Istanbul to Nairobi. So check them out. It doesn't necessarily have to be on a U.S. carrier. Uh, Okay. I'm looking here. I think we may be done. Oh, I, I spoke too soon. Uh, Ellen says Kenya Airways. Yes, they do fly nonstop from New York, but not every day. Um, and uh, Harry wants to say, I'm, I'm headed to California this afternoon. Do I have to worry about any mandates like masks or COVID testing? The testing part, probably not, but you better bring a mask and you better bring your proof of vaccination if you want to go to a restaurant. Okay. Uh, and Brian says ANA Airlines are good, obviously, through Tokyo. I love it. Uh, and by the way, they are a, a Star Alliance partner with United. Uh, and there you have it. All right. Um, good. We're out of time. So let me give you some reminders again. Hidden Turkey on your PBS local station, or you can get it st- live streaming anytime you want on Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. Plus. Of course, our website, petergreenberg.com, to send me some more uh, emails if you want. That's peter at petergreenberg.com. But the website has the imaginative name petergreenberg.com. We update that every day. And, of course, our radio show this Saturday, Eye on Travel on CBS. Check your local listings, or you can stream it live by just going to our website at about 10.05 a.m. Eastern. Peter S. Greenberg, at Peter S. Greenberg on, 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 uh, on Twitter, and at Peter Greenberg on Instagram. Thank you guys for watching. I'm not going in the water. I've got other stories to do today based on following up on what's going on at Southwest Airlines. So please fly safe and uh, behave yourselves, and we'll see you next week.